Hello and welcome back. It has been an incredibly long time since my last video in this series, or well, my last video period, but I decided to pick it up, whoops, and that I want to continue on with the lightest Linux distro series because, you know, people seem to like it. Episode 3, today's installment of lightest Linux distros is DSL, which if you didn't know stands for damn small Linux, interestingly. Anyways, um, DSL is most similar to Tiny Core. Uh, Tiny Core is about a 25 to 30 megabyte ISO. DSL, it was only 50 megabyte. And we're gonna be living on the edge today because I actually haven't tried this specific operating system in my uh, decrepit old computer before and in fact I've been having a good bit of trouble with my computer lately I think that something must be going bad on my video card here because I'm getting some serious artifacting onto my display and I can't always get an image even when I can tell that the computer's been booted so let's see if we can even get the thing started I'm gonna make sure it's plugged in down here which it isn't okay plugged in and we'll go over here Make sure the power supply is switched on. Now comes the moment of truth here. Come on. Uh. Come on. So to troubleshoot the power supply, I'm going to turn it off and unplug it completely. Here, there we go. And we'll give that just a few seconds to let all the static charge leave. And then hopefully we can get a boot out of this thing. Now we'll have it back on. Come on. The way you can tell is if the fans come on. Okay, I'm going to try one last time here. And we've got it running. Excellent. <laughs> Thank goodness. I was beginning to think that we weren't going to get a boot at all. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take out Tiny Core. And we will swap in DSL here. Hopefully, that will reflect a change on the screen. We may have to reboot. Looks like it attempted to boot. Try again here. Do a restart. Back up the screen here. Oop, look at that. DSL is up and running. It gives you a even gives you a little list of advertisements there. <laughs> Not that I had to pay anything for it, but my motto is if you use a piece of software that's open source and you enjoy it and you use it often, then it's usually good to throw a few dollars in the way of the developers. And joining back with us now, you'll find that we are successfully in the operating system. Getting started page here. And I have to say, from first looks for 50 megabytes, this looks like one of the more advanced interfaces that we've seen from such a small ISO image. So it gives you some information. Very nice little pop-up there. I think more, more companies should do that. Oh, and look, it comes with a version of Firefox installed. Let's go ahead and see what that is as we wait for it to <laughs> load from disk. Look at that. Now, this computer doesn't even have a modem in it currently, so I couldn't even begin to show you what the web browsing experience on such a machine would be like. But anyways, it's very nice that it comes with some sort of web browser installed. The fact that it comes with so many interesting things installed makes it a very viable option for bringing life to some of your old computers. We've even got multiple editing programs, several graphics programs, including one called IMT Paint, 
which is basic looks like Windows Paint. I mean, it's it's fairly advanced with layers and effects and channels and such. Wow, I'm I have to say I'm I'm quite impressed with this so far. It also comes preloaded with Office programs, word processing, spreadsheets, PDFs, Word document viewer, calculator, cal Wow, this is this is quite impressive. Let's open the word processing program here. It's called Ted. I suppose that fellow there must be Ted. So we go open a new file. Look at that. Very nice. Although for some reason it is not accepting input from my keyboard at all. Not getting any text from keyboard here. Okay, yeah, I am gonna have to deduct some points, not that I'm really keeping a score, but I am gonna have to deduct some mental points for it not having basic keyboard drivers to support a keyboard out of the box, but other than that, the the software library that it comes with is quite impressive. It even comes with some games. I honestly don't know how they fit all of this into such a small disk. 50 megabytes, that's it's quite impressive. Minesweeper. I know what Minesweeper is. Hmm. Very cool. What else have we got? Several interesting system programs here. There's a mouse configuration. I wonder if there is a, it doesn't look to be a keyboard configuration. So just like Slacks and Puppy Linux and um, Tiny Core, there is an built-in apps browser, but like I said before, there's I've got little to no chance of connecting to the internet with this machine. Although I have been looking into getting modems. So I've got this old modem here from US Robotics. Looks to be about the right time period and the right the right connections and just from a quick look at all the capacitors, it looks like everything is in order. It doesn't look like any of them have busted open or anything. Um, and the soldering job looks fairly neat. So I think I will try this and maybe in my next video I can show you how to get an extremely old computer connected to the internet with one of these little cards that you can get on eBay for about four or five dollars depending on where you ship it from. So here's my concluding thoughts on DSL. I like the fact that it has a lot of stuff preloaded um, and, it, and it makes it fairly easy for people who don't necessarily know a whole lot about computers. You just boot it up and, oh, there's Firefox. You know, everyone nowadays knows how to get on the internet. Um, you know, as long as, as long as you've set up the connection for them beforehand. Uh, I am surprised that it doesn't have at least some basic keyboard drivers built in, but other than that, um, I think it's a very Im impressive little operating system, especially for free, and I think I would rank it above Slacks and above Tiny Core as far as impressiveness in such a small package, because this can really run on almost anything, and with only a 50 megabyte ISO, you can install that on a ancient USB drive and it would still work flawlessly so I think this is quite a good option as long as you're fairly good at finding drivers and such anyways thanks for watching um, if you like this video series let me know and I'll continue to make more videos in this series and if you want to see more videos like the ones on this channel feel free to go ahead and subscribe that way you can get all the latest updates as soon as they come out thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon